we have talked about overfitting and underfitting in general in the previous module let us talk about overfitting in this in decision trees in particular so coming back to the previous example where we have two independent variables on x and y axis and it is a classification case which has two labels pluses and minuses so how would a decision tree go about here a decision tree will probably make a split here it will probably make a split here and unless a stopping criteria is is put on the trees the trees will go on growing so the nodes that we have will keep on growing and it will try to classify every individual point into its so unless a stopping criteria is allowed even individual points with exist so we have two pluses here and we have one minus here so the decision tree will grow further and it will try to classify those points correctly so maybe we will have other trees we'll have other decisions being made which will maybe try to create partitions like this it will create partitions like this to get these two pluses out and it might it will get partitions here to get this minus in a separate bucket so this becomes a separate bucket a small bucket with just one point and similarly here we have another small bucket with just two points all of these will be made if the tree is not allowed to stop now this is not good for us why is this not good you might wonder that we are correctly classifying the points so why isn't this is good this is good for training data but this will not generalize well on unseen data or data which the tree has not seen before so this is not considered good for the final model that we will have so this this is a very complex decision tree which has small decisions being made to capture individual points now these points are like noise in the data they don't represent the underlying overall pattern in the data and uh, if a tree captures the noise in the data it wouldn't generalize well on the unseen data so if i have to draw the performance of a decision tree with respect to the complexity so this is the complexity on x axis and let's say this is the accuracy of a decision tree and how is the complexity of a decision tree defined the complexity of a decision tree is defined based on the depth of the tree so let's say we have a tree which is this it has just let's say a depth of 2 so this is the first depth this is the second depth and compare this with another tree which has let's say a higher depth so it goes on splitting for a considerable depth and these are the terminal nodes you have So of course this is a tree with depth one, two, three, and four. So this tree has a depth of four. It is more complex than this tree, which has a depth of two. Now, how much depth should we select? That is decided based on cross validation and based on on multiple iterations, which we'll talk in details in a later video. But depth is what defines the complexity of a decision tree. A tree with higher depth is more complex than a tree with smaller depth now if i have to plot the accuracy with respect to complexity let us plot this for both training and test data set as the performance will be different in both so for a training data set the more complex the tree the better it is so it will go on increasing so remember this is your training data the more the com more complex your tree is the better you perform on the training data because you start to classify or you start to partition individual points and that of course will improve your accuracy on the training data but this might not generalize well on your test data so if if i draw this for a test data it will increase eventually and after some time it will start to decrease so this is how it will perform on your test data initially you have a very simple model maybe a, a tree with just one depth so this might underfit the data this is the portion where underfitting happens where your model is very simple it is less complex and this is where overfitting happens so this is where overfitting happens where you have a very complex model which performs well on the training data but not on the test data so this is the sweet spot that we always talk about when we talk about overfitting versus underfitting this is a sweet spot in case of a decision tree so we try to figure out this using processes that we will discuss in a later video